Ross, can you clear up the Matt Tabernard stuff? What, what, what's the issue? And it's a big blow for the team. He's been in such good form. Yes, yeah, stress reaction, possible stress fracture. So um, he'll miss a number of weeks, number of weeks, long long term injury. Yeah, disappointing for Matt. He's in really good form, important part of our structure. But every club's got to deal with injuries. So um, we'll support Matt, and then you know the focus is on those who can train and available and you know, um, preparing and improving our football for Brisbane. You get frustrated last year that similar kind of thing. It was a shorter sample size of his form, but he was really good and then he missed such a big chunk and it's happened again just when he's starting to really come on. It's frustrating. I've, I feel disappointment and a real empathy for Matt. It's um, one of the hardest things is being an AFL player is that resilience of your body and he's a, one of our great preparers and he's a really good story of hard work and improvement and growth so um, it's part of the journey we're going to have to find a solution two years in a row now um, looks like the same foot so there's some mechanics issues there he he works really hard to prepare himself and, and manage himself but we're going to have to um, find um, an improved method for him we've heard adam simpson at west coast talk about the optus stadium turf and, and lath lane's turf's hard too is the same sort of thing with you guys? Is it a turf issue with Optus and maybe here, or is it just a, an unlucky situation? Yeah, I haven't got all the threads to pull together. Um, I, I can only talk to us, but I imagine the management principles are the same, trying to manage, um, put people in the best boots, get the best services. Um, we, we tend to manage out here. We have full control quite well. Optus are really working hard with us. It clearly has had some challenges. Our luck to this point would be in, it, but it's just a sharp reminder to um, recalibrate everything we do to make sure we can control the controllables and then continue to work with Optus. Um, I, I don't think we can assert that it's Optus, but um, we, we know we had more feed issues last year. Uh, as a report, so we've worked hard to stay on top of that this year and until this point we've done that pretty well and our luck had been in, so, um, you know, I, I try not to dive into the weeds. My job's to set strategy and help guide people, so, um, which is Jason Webby, our head of sports science, will do that for his particular area where we'll, we'll support him. So, yeah, it's just really full for Matt, but pretty keen to get on and talk about the game. Um, and, and improve our football. Who's in the frame as he's replaced? Yeah, I haven't got, um, I spoke about it on seven last night. Um, Cam McCarthy had had a pretty solid year, just had tapered off a little bit, but his attitude and effort had been really strong. Griffin Logue's come back in, if you're talking talls. Do we go smaller and more mobile? They're a really good running team, so they're, they're things we'll get to. Would you consider bringing in a genuine Ruckman and pushing Lobb forward more, or are you happy with Lobb? Yeah, I, I think that would have been a, probably the number one um, number one thought really but Sean Darcy's out for four to six weeks with a medial ligament in the ankle so that's really unfortunate for for Sean and us so um, well we can look at Scott Jones and Lloyd but um, they're in different stages of development so um, yeah we've been really pleased with Rory's luck Rory Lobb's ruck work. Um, it's growing every week. And Steph Martin's a really mobile ruckman, so as is um, Rory. So we, we think it would be a good challenge. In light of those injuries, do you give any further thought to the mid season draft or adding? It's not something we've got a list management meeting we got to. I think we're yet to determine whether it be season ending from Matt or not. So it's in its early stages of assessment, but um, that would certainly be a consideration. Does this accelerate Aaron Sandland's timeline at all uh, this year with these rock covers? No, he's, he's being um, moved along as quickly as possible. So um, it's always best practice. So that wouldn't influence. Um, yeah, they're independent of each other's program. Ross, how important is this game Not to rest the slide after three losses and just steady? So yeah, they're they're all important. Um, all important. Oh, the, the win loss. We're disappointed. We. You know, could easily be in a lot better shape. So, um, and our offence is really disappointingly tailed off. 
but we've identified areas that we think are relatively easy fixes and you know I own the weekend for not not being able to identify that on the run better than I did so um, and as a coaching panel and as a playing group so it was a real missed opportunity um, we thought against Richmond and both teams have had opportunities it's probably producing a little bit more quality from the opportunities and, and moving the ball in a slightly different fashion but creating better opportunities so I think we're fifth or sixth for entries so we're playing with penetration we just um, we'll continue to just fine tune that and get better. We, we think our best is very good. Um, got real belief in our contest, real belief in our team defence, the consistency of our stoppage work, um, and we've been competing in the state really strongly. Um, so it's a very even season. We, we want to improve um, to be consistent in our attack. We've had some ripping weeks, and you know, post G, GWS, I was like, let's get to Adelaide and get it done. Um, I thought against Richmond we had real opportunities. We're getting the ball back centre forward in with a signal. We sit in the top two or three there. It's exactly where you want to be in the AFL. So um, if we can score better off those opportunities, say like Geelong are, even though we're getting more opportunities there, you know, we're, we're on the way to being a lot better team. So on the, on the bigger timeline, we're really improving, but we, we'd like to do it in a, in a quicker, more timely fashion and reward our... Our, our members on the weekend against a quality outfit. How much time do you put into Lockie Neal this weekend? Yeah, no more than, we haven't tagged all year, so um, we know what Lockie's good at, we know what his weaknesses are. We'll be looking to minimise his strengths and um, trying to exploit his weaknesses because everyone's got them. So, um, look, they, they got hold of us last year here. You know, there was some lessons in that, and but we, we've been able to compete against everyone, so... I'm really confident we're going to go there and compete and we're going to put on a really good performance. With, with how much changes from year to year with the stuff you do in stoppages and that, will Lockie be able to know what you're doing each time or do you change things that much that he will sort of it moves yeah. too quickly? Or Look, I was a midfield coach at the Swans versus that great West Coast midfield. Um, big influence at St Kilda in the midfield and we've been a really strong stoppage team. It's really just... It's about aggression and winning the ball. There's not too much science to it. Everyone wants to complicate it. We've got great getters. Great. It's not even really about the ruck tap. It doesn't interest me that much, as long as it falls in a certain area. So it's about intent and ball hunting. And we've got great ball hunters. We've got great intent. So I'm pretty sure that will take care of it. Ross, is Harley Bennell still on track? Yeah. So is he looking at a waffle game on Saturday? Yeah. How significant is that? And, and is this getting close to the last roll of the dice now for him? Well, I think you're stating the obvious that it's really important to him. I think we all know that, which is fair. And it's significant because he's a wonderful talent. He, he's had a lot of adversity and he's persisted and persevered. And at this stage, he looks to be um, overcoming it. But, you know, we're, we're all cautious based on previous outcomes. So, yeah, I'm just going along. Nice and smoothly here, not too much hyperbole at the minute. So will, will, will he just be limited minutes and will he be just forward or what are your plans for him? Yeah, no, he played midfield and forward and basically no really healthy minutes, probably about 85 minutes. So, yeah, we, which is about midfield minutes. Yeah, so it's just exciting for him. You can see a bounce in his step. He looks at me and bucks. He, he's lean, he's fit. He's really coming along. How long do you think he needs to spend in the waffle. I know it's hard to put a number on it, but... Yeah, no, I'll agree with you. It's really hard to put a number on it. But I'm sure the, the hype will start and the demands will start. Like, I was probably a bit disappointed with the, the noise around Connor after nine months off. It, it does tend to start quickly. I understand it, but it's just not realistic sometimes. And, and I think Harley's a handful of games in four years, you know, but um, we'll deal with that as it happens.